Okay, so in the previous lecture, we talked about prefixes and I told you what the meaning of prefixes was and what each of the prefix actually mean. Now in this lecture, we are gonna see how we can convert a normal number back into a prefix. Okay, we converted a prefix into a normal number. Now we're gonna see how we can convert the prefix, a normal number into prefix. So well, it's uh, actually pretty much the same as uh, the previous um, knowledge which I gave you. Okay, so basically, what, uh, for example, this is our number, okay, point double zero one meters. Okay, this is some measurement that we have made or okay yeah this is some measurement we have made and now we need to convert this into a prefix form okay we need to make it uh, a bit more easy to handle okay so now what we can do is we we need to move this decimal at the end over here we need to move it to the right hand side we'll skip one zero we'll skip the second zero and we'll skip the one and bring it over here in doing so how many digits did we skip we skipped one, two, three. Three digits have been skipped. Okay, remember one thing, whenever the decimal moves from left to right, okay, whenever, look at this arrow, whenever the decimal moves from left to right, it always means that you need to write the answer in the form of a negative power, okay? So the 10 that you are gonna add to this one or you're gonna multiply to this one will always have a negative power, okay? Whenever the decimal has been shifted, from left to right. Now in this case, it has been shifted by three digits. So this would become one point, right? One point. Uh, actually it's uh, one, it's just one because where point is at the right hand side, it, it has no value, okay? It, it, this is the whole number that we have. Now it, it jumped by three digits, right? So you're gonna multiply this one by 10 with the power of three, but remember, it has moved from left to right, but this three would have a negative sign, okay? This is how you convert a normal number into standard form first. This, this form is known as standard form. Okay, after conversion to standard form, what have we done? Okay, after conversion to standard form, this is gonna be one raised to the power of minus three meters. If you go back to the prefix table, 10 raised to the power of minus three is represented by milli, right? This is milli. This is milli. Okay, so 10 raised to the power of minus three is represented by milli, so you can replace this 10 raised to the power of minus three by a small m. So this becomes one millimeters. Okay, so point double zero one meters is actually equal to one millimeter. Okay. Now, similarly, we can have a larger number. For example, it's point double zero zero and zero zero one. Okay, so now meters is equal to what digit? All right, so now let's let's try figuring this out. Let's move this decimal so that it comes to the right hand end of the one. One, two, three, four, five, and six. We've skipped six places or six digits. So it's gonna be one multiplied by 10 to the power of six, but now, if you look at the direction of movement, it's from left to right again. There will be a negative sign right next to the six, okay? So it's gonna become one raised to the power of minus six meters. Now, in this one, what is one raised to the power of minus six meters equal to? Well, 10 raised to the power of minus six means micro. Okay, so this is gonna be one micrometers. Okay, similarly, let's do another example. Point. All right, so this is one number that we have. Let's do the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, we brought it to the right-hand side of the one. To bring it to, it to the right-hand side, we skipped nine places. It's gonna be 10 raised to the power of nine. Now look at the direction. It's from left to right. Whenever you skip the places from left to right, I told you have to add a negative sign with the power. And this is gonna be in meters. 10 raised to the power of minus nine actually is represented by nano, okay? It becomes one nanometer. Clear? Now let's try some other examples with positive uh, values or positive uh, uh, powers of 10. Okay, I told you when you move the decimal from left to right, 
the power is going to be negative. What if you move the decimal from right to left? Okay, this, let's take an example, one, two, three meters. Okay, this is a thousand meters. Right from your, uh, okay, this is 1000 meters. Remember, at the end of any digit, any number, there is always a decimal, okay? Now, you need to move this decimal such that it comes right next to this one, to the right-hand side of one. You're gonna move it from right to left, so it's gonna be one, two, three digits. You need to move it over here, so it's gonna, it's gonna become one multiplied by 10 to the power of three meters. Now look at the direction of movement. You move the decimal from the right-hand side to the left-hand side. So, so remember one thing, when you move it from right to left, the power is going to stay positive, okay? It's not going to change. It's not, you don't need to move it, uh, change it to negative sign. And 10 raised to the power of 3 is actually equal to the prefix kilo. So replace this 10 raised to the power of 3 by kilo. It's going to become 1 kilometers. And 1,000 meters is equal to 1 kilometers. This is what you might have uh, known already from your previous knowledge as well. So this is how you can change it using prefix method. Let's try another example. What if you have six zeros next to the one? In this case, again, at the end of any number, there is a decimal. Move it one, two, three, four, five, six, so that it comes right next to the one on the right hand side of the one. You moved again from right hand side to the left hand side. Okay, movement from right to left. Uh, okay, right, it's right to left. So right to left movement means that the sign is gonna stay positive, it will not change. So one is gonna be multiplied by 10 raised to the power of six meters. 10 raised to the power of six actually means mega. It's gonna be one mega meter, okay? And let's do one more example. Okay, nine zeros with a one. Again, you've got this decimal in the end. Move it to the right hand side of one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's right over here. It's gonna become one multiplied by 10 raised to the power of nine meters. 10 raised to the power of nine can be replaced by a giga. So it's gonna be one gigameter. Okay. This is how you convert the simple numbers into prefix methods, into prefixes. Now let's do the conversion uh, from one type of prefix to the other, okay? From prefix to prefix. For example, I'll just give you this example. One megameter is equal to how many kilometers? How to do this? Now let's see. This is pretty simple. Before we do this, you guys should know the meaning of mega. Mega means 10 raised to the power of six, and the meaning of kilo, which means 10 raised to the power of three. Once you know this, you could just uh, take this number on the left-hand side. It's one multiplied by 10 raised to the power of six meters. This one raised to the power of 10 raised, uh, one multiplied by 10 raised to the power of six can also be written as one multiplied by 10 multiplied by 10 raised to the power of three, times 10 raised to the power of three meters. Why can I do that? Well, that's a rule of indices. Whenever the bases are the same, which in this case are the tens, the powers, they'll get added. When you multiply these two tens, they'll give you 10 raised to the power of six because whenever the bases are the same, so in the answer, you keep the base the same, but you add the powers, right? It's gonna become 10 raised to the power of six. So this is what I've done over here. I've just split it the 10 raised to the power of three into 10 cube and 10 cube because I want to convert it into kilometers. Now, once we do this, you know that this 10 raised to the power of three is actually the same thing as kilo, right? So instead of writing 10 raised to the power of three, you can write a km, you can write a k, okay? You just replace the 10 raised to the power of three by the k and leave everything as the same. All right. Now, one multiplied by 10 cubed, what does this mean? This means that you've got three zeros next to the one, right? This means 1,000 kilometers. So in other words, I can say that one megameter is equal to 1,000 kilometers, okay? Let's do another example. What if I have one, okay, this time let's uh, try another, a much bigger number, one gigameters, and I need to convert it into 
Uh, let's say again kilometers. So how to do that? Let's see. So for this, you need to know the meaning of giga, which means 10 raised to the power of, sorry about that, 10 raised to the power of 9. You need to know the meaning of kilo, which means 10 raised to the power of 3. All right. Now, this, instead of writing the giga, I can write it as 1 raised to the power of 9. I can replace it with 1 raised to the power of 9 meters. Okay. Now I need to split this 10 raised to the power of 9 so that I can get a, uh, a 10 cube. Okay. This 10 raised to the power of 9, just uh, separate the 10 cube from it. After separating the 10 cube, what are we left with over here? You're going to just subtract the 3 from the 9 and you're left with a 6, right? You're left with a 6, 10, 6, 10 to the power of 6 and the 1 stays as it is. Okay. Now this 10 cube is actually the same thing as kilo, just replace it by kilo and it becomes 1 multiplied by 10 to the power of 6 kilometers. And by the way, you don't need to convert it into zeros. You can leave it over here in this form, okay? 1.0, 10 raised to the power of 6. Okay, why have I uh, placed a zero over here? Well, I, I've given this answer to two significant figures, okay? Why have I given this to two significant figures? Well, usually the examiner asks you to give the answer to two to three significant figures. So that's why I've given it to two significant figures because you guys might be knowing this from your previous knowledge of math that whenever a zero is written after the decimal, it's significant, okay? We can write it as 1.0, 10 raised to the power of six kilometers. So one gigameters actually means 10 raised to the power of six kilometers, okay? Well, uh, okay, let's try one more example for positive numbers. What if I were to convert gigameters, oops, uh, guys, make sure you make uh, you write the meter sign as a lowercase number, okay? Because uh, this is, okay, make sure that you write this meter as a lowercase number because this meter is actually always written as a lowercase number, okay? So, or, all right, now, one gigameter is how many megameters? Let's do that. Right, so you need to know again the meaning of both of them. Giga means nine and mega means 10 raised to the power of six. And now let's do this. All right, instead of writing giga, you can write 10 raised to the power of nine meters. Okay, now separate this into 10 raised to the power of six. Okay, well, just add in the 10 raised to the power of six over here. What are we left with? Just subtract the six from the nine. We are left with three, right? And times one meters. The 10 raised to the power of 6 can be replaced by mega. 10 raised to the power of 3 stays at its point. It's going to be 1.0 raised 10 to the power of 3 mega meters. Okay, again, I've given the answer to two significant figures. 1 gigameters is 10 raised to the power of 3 mega meters. And by the way, it's, it's actually uh, quite easy. Uh, there is a shortcut to it. Just if you look at the difference in between them, what's the difference in between them? Difference is 3, right? you'll have a megameter which has a power of three. It's that simple. But this is only applicable when you are going from a bigger value to a smaller value. What if you are going from a smaller to a bigger value? In that case, what would happen? All these examples that I've given you, they are all from bigger to smaller values, okay? Mega is bigger than kilo. Giga is bigger than kilo. Giga is also bigger than mega. What happens if you are going from um, smaller value to a larger value? Well, uh, that's something that I'm going to discuss in the next lecture. Thank you, guys.